Good evening. Welcome to Wednesday Evening Inspiration with Terry Fuller, the pastor of the Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church in Atwood, Tennessee. And we are glad that you have joined us this, this evening for this period of inspirational teaching and prayer. Uh, let us go to God in prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks again for this day and for all the days of our lives. For your many blessings that you have poured out upon us and for your grace and your mercy that you have given unto us, we are mighty grateful. For the forgiveness of sin and for giving your son Jesus to pay our sin debt, we thank you and for your salvation that you gave to us. We are mighty grateful. So we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. For we acknowledge you have brought us all the way. We pray for forgiveness of sin, cleansing of all of our iniquities, our unrighteousness. And pray, O oh God, that you would uh, count us worthy to be your children. Pray now that you would bless all the duty binds us to pray for, the ones that said pray for me and those whom we said we would pray for. For all that are viewing this video, we pray, Master, that you would just touch hearts and minds and open up their hearts that they would receive thy word. Pray for bereaved families. We pray for the sick. We pray, O oh God, for, for this sinful nation that we live in. Lord, for uh, it seems though... Uh, we have lost our way and seem like we are no longer trusting and dependent on you. We, we pray, Master, that you would just touch, Lord, and help us to, to go back to when we were a nation that believed in you and trusted in you. We pray, O oh God, that you will continue to deliver your people from all of the calamities that are facing the earth now. Uh, heat in one part and snow in the other, uh, high winds and floods and tornadoes. Lord, it's all in the land now. And pray, O oh God, you would touch our hearts and our minds that we would see that you are speaking to us and that we are to change our ways, to turn from sin and Satan and to return to you that you might heal our land, that you might bless us that you might cause us to be a prosperous people. Bless us, O oh God, and help us to hear your word, Father. We pray now, Lord God, that as we uh, study your word, that you would give us insight, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, that we might be able to rightly divide your word of truth. Lord God, that we might learn what you would have us to do so that we might do your will, that we, in the end, might be found worthy to spend eternity with you. We pray, O oh God, that your will be done in our lives, that your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Deliver us from this pandemic and deliver us from the evil that men do. And then, Lord, when this life is over, allow us to spend eternity with you. That's our prayer our supplication in the name of Jesus, and for Christ's sake we pray. Amen, and thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. God bless you, God bless you. And again, uh, we're still in the book of Acts. Excuse me. We're still in the book of, of Acts, and we are uh, listening to our reading uh, Stephen defense of the charges they are bringing against him. Now, on tonight, we want to uh, read verses 17. I'll cover verses 17 of that uh, seventh chapter through the 34th verse. Now, we may not reach that 34th verse, but we will endeavor to, uh, to reach that 34th verse and share with you uh, Stephen's defense. Part two. Uh, if I'd ask you to read it, so uh, I won't burden you with me reading it. Uh, Stephen has has um, began his defense 
of the charges that that they had brought against him and he had spent time uh telling them how how Israel wound up in Egypt um I think it's important that when uh preachers especially when they preach the gospel there ought to be some kind of background to help the people to understand uh, uh, what the Lord is saying. And Stephen is going to defend himself with the Bible, with Israel history uh, up to Christ. But he's going to take them back to when they did not realize that God had promised them a Christ. Uh, verse Seventeen uh, says, "Do I want to start at verse 17? I think I do. Okay. Uh, <laughs> verse seventeen says, "But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God swore to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied." Uh, they are in Egypt now. God had placed them in the promised land, but because of the famine, uh, uh, Joseph, who were already in Egypt, entreated them to come to Egypt, and Pharaoh uh, uh, and accepted them and blessed them and 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 uh, gave them good land. In Goshen, okay. Uh, 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 but it says, when the time drew nigh and they grew in Egypt, God sent them to Egypt so they could multiply. Okay. God never does anything to you, for you, or with you, that he doesn't have a plan, an ulterior motive. And the motive was for them to go to Egypt and multiply. And when they multiply, another, Scripture says, another Pharaoh rose up that did not know Joseph. And we are talking about anywhere from Three hundred to three hundred and fifty years or more. Oh, okay, that they have been in Egypt, in this fertile land, that that uh, that Pharaoh in Joseph time gave them, and they multiplied. Okay, to the point that they may would have outnumbered. Uh, the people in the Egyptian kingdom, so much that the Pharaoh felt threatened by them and felt like that uh, they are such a large number that if they would uh, side with our enemy, uh, we could be in trouble. Okay? Uh, they would outnumber us. So Pharaoh had a plan. <clears throat> I believe in, in, in studying this, uh, children of Israel got comfortable in Egypt. God sent them down there to multiply. And when they multiplied and they became somebody, you know, they had uh, land and, and, and stocks and they grew and there were people and they were comfortable and they forgot about Canaan. They got comfortable uh, doing what they were doing, living where they were living, and forgot about that they had a land promised to them. So God had to do something to make them uncomfortable. Do you not know that God will take you out of your comfort zone so that you can do what he has for you to do? So many times uh, uh, God blesses us and, and we take his blessings 
and get comfortable. And God said, no, I don't want you to stay here. I want you to go on further. Oh, no, God, I'm, I'm comfortable right here. Uh, and God will make it uncomfortable. And I'm not telling you what somebody told me or what I read in the Bible. I'm telling you what I know, what I know from an experiential standpoint. Uh, God, on, on more than one occasion, has made things uncomfortable for me that I might move to where he would have me to be. So they are in Egypt. They're grown. They're prosperous. And Pharaoh said, no, they... That they're too big, let's subjugate them. So, so he put them into slavery. And even in slavery, they kept growing. Okay. So Pharaoh said, start killing their babies. Okay. Uh, uh, and so uh, they start killing uh, the Hebrew children. And then uh, Pharaoh heard that a deliverer would come and and deliver them. So he starts specifically saying, make sure you get those male children, okay? Get the male babies, okay? So, so, uh, Pharaoh is determined to keep them in bondage because he got cheap labor now. Uh, and he has uh, slaves that, if needed, he could turn them into people that would fight with him. Uh, he has cheap labor. He has servants. I mean, he everything is going in Pharaoh's favor now. And he has determined that I'm going to keep them so they won't be able to grow anymore. Okay. I'll keep them as they are. Um, but in the meantime, God says, I, I'm, gotta, I'm going to send you a deliverer. And Moses is born. And, and God so fixed it that uh, 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 all of the children that's born, uh, uh, some of them were not killed. Moses was placed in the Nile River because his mother couldn't hide him anymore. And it was God's plan to put him in a position so he could learn what he needed to learn, okay? And so fixed it that his mother would be the nursemaid. You know, um, in our history, the African-American history, uh, uh, during slavery time, uh, white people didn't raise their children. Those that had something didn't raise their children. They had nannies and nursemaids to, to, to raise their children, okay, to... to to take care of them, okay? Uh, and um, in Egypt, uh, Pharaoh's sister was the same way. So she uh, said, find me a nursemaid, or, or, or Moses' sister, M Miriam, Miriam was there and said, should I find a nursemaid for you, for, for this baby? And uh, um, Miriam brought her mother, okay? And Moses is reared in the courts of Pharaoh. Uh, interesting, though, uh, um, it says here, um, when Moses was learned in all the wisdom, Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptian and was mighty, okay? But, and the scripture doesn't say but, but I put that but in there, okay? Amen. Um, verse 23 says, And when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brother, brethren, when he was 40. Um, 40 is a significant number in the Bible because 40 is considered a generation. Okay. Um, 40 uh, is when, when uh, Moses was really ready to stand up and God was, really to, was ready to use him. Uh, 
And, we, and you know, for how Moses saw uh, uh, an Egyptian uh, uh, slay a Israelite and Moses exacted judgment on him. And uh, he thought he was doing what God had called him to do. To deliver uh, God's people. And God was calling him to be the deliverer, but not that way. Okay. Uh, and so the next day, he uh, saw two Israelites fight. And he attempted to break them up or put them on the right pathway uh, and they turned on him. Okay. Uh, what made you ruler over us? You gonna kill us like you did the Egyptian and hide him in the sand and, and um, fear came into Moses. He has completed his first 40 years of learning of the Egyptians and all the the training or the the knowledge they could give him and God caused fear to get in Moses and he ran okay we have the people put under subjection the birth of the, the deliverer and the growth of the, the deliverer excuse me he grew in the courts of Pharaoh and in Pharaoh court, he learned uh, basically all that he could learn from man. Uh, but when he knew that uh, if they told on him uh, and made it plain to Pharaoh what he had done, uh, then he would be in trouble. And keep in mind, uh, this Pharaoh really didn't care for the Israelites anyway. And if it was pushed forward that Moses was an Israelite and he had killed an Egyptian, then Moses would have probably been in prison uh, banished from the land or killed. Moses decided he would take charge of his own life and he fled. He fled to Median and, and there is a time for God to teach him. Uh, on the backside of the desert, alone most of the time with just the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, uh, it says here that uh, uh, he was a stranger there and he um, married and had two children. Okay, uh, But when that time expired for him to get the training, God appeared to him in a bush. And uh, uh, the bush uh, burned, but it didn't consume itself. And Moses got close to it and to see what was going on and God spoke to him and really revealed to him uh, 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 I've been preparing you okay uh, he says I'm the God of thy father God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob uh, and and told Moses uh, you know the story put off your shoes for this is holy ground and 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 he tells Moses that I've heard cries of my people. Remember I said that God makes things uncomfortable for you. Uh, before this Pharaoh arose that did not know Joseph, uh, they weren't thinking about God. They were comfortable uh, living in uh, Goshen and being prosperous uh, uh, and living the life. Okay, uh, But once uh, Pharaoh put them in 
bondage, they rediscovered God. They Somebody remembered uh, that uh, the fathers had said that God would return us to the land he had promised. Okay, And so here we are now. Uh, in in Moses in Goshen, and God is uh, ending his second training period and ready for him to go and deliver his people. Verse 34 says, I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Israel, and have heard their groaning, and I am come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt. And, and uh, let me go past this 34th verse. And Moses uh, wanted to refuse. Okay. Uh, he didn't want to go. He, he had got comfortable with the wife and the family in Goshen. Uh, uh, yet God had orchestrated, that's the word I'm looking for, his life to bring him to a point to where he would be the one that would go down and would deliver them out of Egypt. Uh, and how God sent him back to Egypt to deliver his people. Uh, when God spoke to Moses and 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 it's not in our lesson, but uh, he told them, uh, told them, go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And to tell Pharaoh and the people, Israel, that I am, that I am, have sent me. Moses' life is divided up into uh, three areas, three parts, three 40-year parts. 40 years in the courts of Pharaoh, learning all that the Egyptians could teach him, and then 40 years on the backside of the desert in the land of Median, communing with God and learning all that he had not learned as a child growing up. And the next 40 years would be leading the children of Israel. Um, One of the things that that I believe Stephen knew that he had to get through to them was that Christ Jesus is greater than Moses. Moses was thought of as as a great prophet, a great lawgiver. Moses, they reverence Moses. They reverence David. Okay, uh, 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 there were men that they that. The Jews at this time thought that uh, they were uh, untouchable. Uh, Stephen is using Moses here to teach them about Jesus. Moses, the great lawgiver, and if Moses endorsed Jesus, how could they resist him? Okay. So, so we see here in this defense, Moses, in, in, excuse me, in Stephen's defense, he's, he's using Moses to let the people know that I just didn't jump on Jesus' bandwagon. Moses was already on Jesus' bandwagon because Moses tells them, that Jesus is coming. Um, when folks resist you, when you try to tell them about Jesus, you don't have to try to cram Jesus down their throat. 
There are other ways of making them understand that Jesus is who he is, the Savior of the world. And he is because God has so designated him as such. And God has given him uh, that responsibility to seek and to save that which is lost. Stephen is presenting a great defense for them coming after him for preaching Jesus. We have to be able to stand against those that would try to destroy us because we preach Jesus. God has given us everything that we need. And Stephen has made a great, or is making a great defense. Now, uh, on next week, he's going to focus more so upon Moses. And then he's going to uh, slip into David, whom they thought so much about. And then he's going to bring him to a point to where they uh, can't resist. Amen. Stephen's defense, part two. Uh, somebody says uh, a good defense is a better offense. And Stephen may be on the offense in telling them about what God's plan is. Because oftentimes folks don't know what God's plan is. They got their own plan, and they think they know what God's plan is when they really don't know. But Stephen is telling them what God's plan is, uh, and that is to bring the Israelites, God's chosen people, into a new dispensation where a better sacrifice is made better than the ones that God gave to Moses to give them. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you again for this day, for the blessings of this day. For all you've done, again, we give you thanks. We thank you for this period of teaching and prayer and pray, oh God, that something has been said that will help us to live better for you in these evil days, that we might be inspired to, to share your word because Stephen shared your word with those that would accuse him, that we might be more inspired to share your word with a dying world, culminating in the fact of that Jesus loved them so much that he gave his life. and He died and God raised him from the dead in the newness of life that we might have the newness of life. Thank you again, Father. Continue to watch over us and keep us in your care. Be our God. Allow us to be your children. As always, we pray, thy will be done. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank you. Amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you. See you next week. Big wave.